Hi, it's Cami from Tidbits. We are in the midst of our RV renovation. Um, if you've been following along, you know that we plan to move into it while we build our home on our property. But I wanted to tell you about the different kinds of wall treatments that we've been doing in the RV and take you along for a little bit more of the process of this renovation. Okay, it's cold in here, so we're gonna see how far we can get with this video today. Uh, I myself am more of a before and after gal, but when I posted some process pictures on my Instagram feed, I had my followers there beg to see more of the process, so I figured making some videos would be the best place for me to kind of show you how we're walking through this renovation. So today is all about the walls, and we've done several different treatments. But before we could even get to making the walls prettier in this RV, we discovered a lot of water damage in both the front and the back of the RV. Now, ideally, this is something you should look for before you bought it. Um, that is definitely a big lesson learned on our case. But as we were going to the walls, we noticed spots that felt really squishy. And as we began to peel the layers off, um, there was a lot of wood rot and damage there. So we had to rebuild a lot of that. Once that was completed, we could begin with the different wall treatments. And we've done, I think, a variety of four in this RV. So I'm gonna take you around and kind of show you the different kind of treatments we've done and the things we've used to make those look a lot better than the standard manufactured wallpapers and paint that they do in these RVs. Obviously, we have used a lot of paint and there are just a few surfaces that we just painted right over the manufactured wallpaper, which you can do. But I definitely went and talked to the experts at the paint store and they gave me favorite primer that they use and we've used in many instances. And it's the Porter's Paint High Hide, I believe. I will leave a link to that below. But we put that primer over every single surface, the wallpaper, um, any of the cheap wood that's in here that we were gonna paint and inside cupboards. Anyways, we used that, we sprayed that primer everywhere. So then on a few surfaces, like in this kitchen, we just painted. And you do have to kind of patch up the walls. There's some damage on the walls, especially if you took down cupboards and cabinets and things. So we had to patch those up and then we were able to just paint right over that wallpaper, which makes it easy. Okay, so I'm here in the slide out section and you guys are just gonna have to look past the construction mess if you wanna see this process, cause it's kinda messy. But I wanted to show you the fun treatment that we did on a lot of the surfaces and that was this paintable beadboard wallpaper that we put up. It's a pre-pasted wallpaper, so you just have to kind of get it wet and then you apply it to the walls and then you can paint it any color you want. And I think this paintable beadboard wallpaper gave a really nice cottage fill to the RV and allowed me to play with color and paint still. So we put that on this whole slide out section. We've also put it on some of this entertainment built in wall section. We've applied it in the bathroom vanity area and also in the master bedroom. So that was a really nice way to cover a lot of the damage that was done to the walls when we took down some of the cabinets. Um, you could, we still patched it up and made it smooth, but we were able to just put that wallpaper right over it, hide the unsightly walls, and then paint whatever color we wanted. Okay, then the other fun part was we used some decorative wallpapers. Um, this is a pill and stick. We've used it in some of the bunk areas. And um, right here, you can see this fun faux distress concrete wall. It's just a small panel and I'm kind of using it as a little mini accent wall, but it looks really cool. Um, we have used a variety of the pre-pasted wallpaper, which is the kinds you just get wet and then apply to the wall. We've used a paste wallpaper, the one you have to put the glue on, and we've also used the pill and stick. So we've been able to explore using all of those varieties. Um, our favorite has definitely been the pre-pasted. You just get it wet and we like it because once you get it to the wall, it's a lot easier to maneuver and get to the spot you want it. Whereas this pill and stick, it is really sticky. And once you get it on there, it's hard to remove and reposition. But it all turned out really cute. Um, let's go over here and I'll show you kind of the bunk area and how that turned out. 
So in this bunk area, I kind of let my kids help me choose the kind of wallpaper that they liked. But the hardest thing about these areas is that it's, it's tight quarters and can be a little tricky to paint and to put up wallpaper, but it's doable. One thing I learned, uh, make sure when you're purchasing your wallpaper, you check the measurements. I purchased these and one roll was enough, so I just assumed that one roll was enough for the other, this, um, this bottom bunk wallpaper, but it was not enough. It was not the same measurements, so we're still waiting on some of this to finish applying that to the bottom bunk. But it's turning out really cute having three different varieties of wallpaper. So this is the kids' wardrobe and it's small. We lined it with the beadboard wallpaper as well and painted over it. Um, my husband did kind of a planking treatment. I'm kind of hoping that this will look like maybe like a built-in antique hutch. So I'm gonna paint that later today. Okay, it is cold in here, so I'm gonna quickly finish the other ones. That's what would have been nice to do this in warmer weather, but such is the timing of things. So let's go into the bathroom. I'll show you some of the fun things that we did in this tiny, tiny space. Okay, for this teeny tiny bathroom, we've done a couple of different things. Um, we purchased this plastic faux marble surround for the shower surround. It is definitely an upgraded look to what most shower surrounds look like in RVs. Um, on the base of the tub, we used this smart tile. It's a pill and stick tile. Um, really handy and easy to apply, and it works good in moist and humid environments, so that would be good. On the bathroom walls, I had my husband just nail up about one and a half inch strips of wood, and then I just painted over them. It's kind of like a faux plank or a batten treatment to these walls. Okay, we're calling this section kind of our entertainment section. Um, it was really kind of awkward the way they had it before we got our hands on it, but basically I wanted it to look like a, a clean, beautiful surface, but also have storage capabilities. So over here, and I'm not going to shut this all the way, we haven't put a doorknob or anything on here, but this will kind of be the desk and TV area. Um, we just can drop this down and hide that when we don't want to see it, but it'll be handy for me to have this tiny little place to work. And then down here we'll have some hidden storage as well. Okay, over on this side, um, this was initially one big deep cupboard. I had my husband kind of divide it in half so that we could have storage both on the front and on the back end where the master bedroom is. So again, it's just kind of like a hidden cupboard. Um, then we'll put little shelves or divide these up for the kids so they can store the things that they need in there. And then on the other side, we have extra storage for the master, master bedroom area. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up because I need that heater back on and you can hear me with it going. So this is the tiny little master bedroom area and something fun I just wanted to show you that we did here. Um, my husband built this faux wood beam, I guess you can call it. There's actually hidden storage inside of it. Now there were cupboards on each side of the master bed that we were initially gonna keep, but that's where we found a lot of the water damage. So they had to come down and we had to kind of rethink this space a little bit. Okay, so today I am going to stain that beam, paint a few more things, my husband's still working on the flooring and building custom kitchen cabinets, which I will do probably separate videos for those to kind of show you that process. Okay, that kind of wraps up the wall treatments that we're doing in this space. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I created a shop page for all the sources, so go ahead and look for that link below. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this process and I hope you'll come back to follow me along for more inspiration for do-it-yourself living. 